Hello, and welcome to another session of Reconstruction and Jim Crow, where we'll be discussing in this video the leaders that were important to understanding and leading what happened during this time period of Reconstruction. So with no further ado, let us begin. Again, leaders relevant. Relevant meaning makes a big deal to Reconstruction. And the first one is, yes indeed, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States during the Civil War. Now, President Lincoln's viewpoint was reconciliation. Reconciliation, you might ask, what does that mean? Well, it means basically getting back together in a friendly way. For instance, if you have an argument with one of your friends, and then somebody helps you, like maybe a peer mediator helps you, you know, negotiate, talk to each other, and come to an understanding, and then your friends again, that's reconciliation. See, President Lincoln believed that the preservation of the Union was a primary objective, more so than punishing the South. In fact, in the time period right after the Southern Army and Southern government had evacuated their capital in Richmond, Virginia, President Lincoln went down there to visit and to see what had been the center of the Confederate government. And the general in charge of occupying, as in running, for the Union Army, Richmond, was a man by the name of General Weitzel. And he asked the President Lincoln, how should they you know, treat the Southerners? And he said, let them up easy. Now, you can use your imagination think, let them up easy kind of means to not be too mean, vindictive, to not be too strong to them. And you say, well, why didn't President Lincoln? Hopefully you learned this during the Civil War unit in sixth grade. President Lincoln did not get to carry out his reconciliation plan, primarily because he was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth on April 14, 1865. So President Lincoln, the first leader relevant to the study of Reconstruction. And the second one is a very famous man, Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass had been enslaved, held as a slave on the eastern shore of Maryland, and he escaped from slavery, made his way north in 1838. And he began speaking out, obviously, against the uh, slavery issues, the, the evils of slavery of that time period. And he would go on to fight for some of the amendments that you learned about in the last video, the constitutional amendments that guaranteed voting rights. As you remember, we learned about the 13th Amendment that abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment that gave African Americans basically born in the United States citizenship, and the 15th Amendment that guaranteed African men the right to vote. So that was one of Frederick Douglass's uh, big causes. And he became a powerful voice, as in speaker, for human rights and civil liberties for all. Now, if you want more information, um, one place you can go to is Wikipedia. Another place is the uh, public broadcasting has a website that's set up and tells you more about Frederick Douglass. Let's go and look at those very quickly. Here you see the Frederick Douglass website from PBS, and it has some basic uh, information, has a few pictures, but it's just some real quick information. And it gives you more information, the portrait of Frederick Douglass. So it's just basic information. Now, the Wikipedia article gives you a lot more. You can see here the outline of. Frederick Douglass's story and of course there will be links to other sources that you could get to understand Frederick Douglass in even more detail. So again first leader relevant to the study of Reconstruction Abraham Lincoln, second one Frederick Douglass and the third one is Robert E. Lee. Now of course Robert E. Lee had been the Southern General. In fact, uh, by the end of the war, he was the main Southern General in charge of all the armies, basically, in the South. And what General Lee did was urge Southerners, like President Lincoln was urging Northerners, to reconcile at the end of the war and to reunite as Americans when it was clear that the fight uh, wouldn't go on successfully, even though many other people wanted him to continue to fight. Now, he was urged to disband, break apart the army unofficially, and then send it up into the hills to continue to fight. You can imagine what that would have caused, fighting in the hills of Virginia and the south for years to come. It would have crippled 
this uh, nation. You can just imagine what world situations we would not have been prepared to deal with had we been crippled in that way. And you see the quote down there where General Lee basically said, so far from engaging in a war to perpetuate slavery, I am rejoiced that slavery is abolished. What he was talking about was he did not want to go into that guerrilla hill warfare to continue that. Now, the last thing you're going to learn about uh, General Lee in this instance is that after the war, he became president of Washington College, which was a college in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia in the town kind of city called Lexington. Now, you see a highlight there that says Mr. Stevens has a story about that place. Well, it's now known as Washington and Lee University. When Mr. Stevens was in college, as a freshman in college, we went there one Saturday afternoon to play a football game against Washington and Lee University. It was the very first time that Mr. Stevens you know, was in a college football game, and he was in on the kickoff team. He goes running down the field, and all of a sudden I get hit so hard that I actually saw stars in my chin strap on my helmet was busted off. I think that's probably what they call a concussion, but back then in the 19... The early 1980s. They didn't worry too much about that kind of stuff. But that was a college at which General Lee was the president, the leader, to try to get it back on its feet after the Civil War. So, you say, what comes next? The next module is going to be Reconstruction Ends. So asking yourself, before you go into that module, do you think it ended too early or just at the right time? So, tune in next time same bat time, same bat channel. And we thank you for your attention during this time period. And we will welcome you in looking over your notes, doing the formative assessment, and then preparing for the next module. Thank you very much.